G'day and welcome you to another episode of the I'm Atlas, I'm by Chronicler and Wolf and and this is the version of the intro and I get much um so let's let's just be relatively normal and we've got a lot to talk about. It's the playoffs. We've got uh, our our voting to discuss as well, which is going to be fun uh, for All Pro, which I think is probably a good thing to get off our chests. Um, but gentlemen, uh, how we feeling today? I haven't really, I haven't done a how we feeling. Last time I feel like we just jumped straight into it. How are you, Chronicler? Increasingly worried <laughs> that we're going to T1 Genji again. And I really was hurt. There was a lot of plot lines that were looking like they were going to resolve this this ongoing issue. But I'm I'm now a firm believer that our fate is inevitable and we are doomed yet again for the fifth time in a row. Yep. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. Nah. Nah. Yeah. I. He kept up the Australian. I liked it. I think that Han was. I think Han can get it done. Oh, they're much better. Yeah. It doesn't change our fate. No, I think it. They're I much th- better. I think here's the thing, Chronicle, <laughs> because I think what's gonna happen is. T1 and Hanwha Life are going to play a best of five of League of Legends on Whoa. the current patch to decide which team should go to the finals. Now, I think that's fair. I mean, personally, like, yeah, you know, no, some people I, think that's I, a bit controversial. Reasonable. You've nailed that. Some people think T1 should just go directly there, but I do think they have to play <laughs> Hanwha in a best of five to, to decide. I think that is the rules. And they're going to um, do that in Jamshil as well, right? Yeah. And in that's going to be on yeah. Saturday. K- KSPO Dome. Yep. So, you know, given that, um, you know, I don't think T1 will just win by default. I think there's a pretty good chance Han would take it. And they do have to win three games, don't they, out of five yeah, games? Yeah, three out of the five, yeah. Yeah. Not, of course, two <laughs> yeah. or four. It's right. just three. They do have to, uh, also do they have win, to win two them consecutively? and Yeah, no. No, not necessarily not consecutively. consecutively. Oh. They could win game one, game three, and game five. I'm could really it? glad we're explaining best of fives <laughs> uh, when we have two series left in the So playoffs. I'm also a Hama Life Esports um, Believer, biased caster, because yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> really said it. Really said um, the tone for this episode, Val. <laughs> yeah, just just because you know, I think that Hamlet Life Esports is going to make it. Obviously, I'm very biased for them, um, and I just think it's because right now they're in better form. T1, you know, they beat DK, but I think DK's form also plummeted uh, like 90 percent down and we really didn't really get to see much of them today uh, although they were here uh they didn't really show up at all um so t1 they won but i think home life esports is like three tiers higher than him or them but um it is going to be interesting to see if t1 can kind of reach the next level i think that's really the only way they have a chance i would agree as well um for me i i'm just gonna predict t1 because i i i like being wrong as well, and mm. so uh, it'd be nice if we had a different final that wasn't T1 Genji. Um, but at least you know, I guess I guess I get to be right. You I know, I Alice, want Hanwha to win. <laughs> we don't get. Don't that. get me wrong. I want something new. You've been more right than I have been. I have gotten every single prediction wrong except Hamalei Esports beating Kwangdong Freaks, and not score, but just teams. Every team has been wrong for me. I predicted <laughs> really? KT to win. I predicted. Uh, no, wait. Actually, the Genji I mean, one I got I'm correct. This, I think I was the same as you, though. The I'm Genji pretty sure I, I we are correct. also all just we're both terrible. Maybe it's just this playoffs. Maybe just this playoffs has been really interesting and like back and forth, and you never really knew who was going to win. I predicted KT, DK, um, T1. You predicted DK Han-Wan. over Genji. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I predicted Genji. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same. Never mind. So it was actually two series. Did I? Yeah, I did. You did. I did. Everyone was. I think it was unanimous. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was really just a score diff. Yep. Um, we started off with like the really um, one sided affair of the first series, although it was closer than expected. And then we kind of went into like, oh, it's crazy. And then back to one sided. Good job, now. Cars. Yeah. Can, like we, can the... we do a bit of a bit of an 07 for KDF and for, for KT? A bit of a 07. Because, uh, you know. KDF, I know, it wasn't Cuz, great, was Cuz, it? Cuz was, Cuz was, was great, mm-hmm. as, as we expected. That was really all I'd, that I'd want to say yeah. in this Quantum series. were so young and full of life in the early game. <laughs> 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 Especially in game two. Uh, yeah. Game yeah. one as well. Game three, not so much. And then the world smacked them in the face. I'm... And we realized, hey, Hollow Life looks pretty good. Yeah. Mm. And at the time, we weren't sure, like, maybe it's just because it's Quantum Freaks, but no. It was actually Hollow Life was just really yeah. good. Quantum Freaks never really had a chance just because of the opponent. Yeah. Unlucky. Yeah, uh, definitely a little bit unlucky. I don't think Kwangna would have won against anyone, unfortunately. They could have been beaten DK the way they played today. 
True. I don't, they could have won that for sure. Know. They did it in the regular season. Already. I actually yeah. think that that's not true. I actually think that like DK just get completely wrecked in their brains by certain teams. Hmm. I think Gen G they feel like they have a chance against because that's how the sentiment is. But also, if they're ever up against T1, they feel like they always lose because they do, and yeah. then they do. Really, DK are uh, they're a self-fulfilling really, prophecy. They're, they're, yeah, they're they're really a really cool tale in how manifestation is real. And if you just want something and believe something enough, it can almost come true. I yeah. think yeah. it's they the still always lose. I mean, realistically, even more than the opponents they faced, I think that the fact that they could lose the series and it didn't matter, like they would go to lower. Like there was nothing to lose, so to speak. Like if they win, it's amazing for them. Genji would be would have been very unhappy with that loss, obviously, considering they were massive considering they were massive favorites. And I think moving into a series where actually you either go to the land, I mean the, the major land we play on land here, but the the actual like lower bracket finals in front of a massive crowd, you get to actually um, you know, potentially go to MSI versus um, you know, just like, ah, oh, if we beat Genji, it's it's amazing for us. Like there's nothing to lose, kind of difference there i think the pressure difference is definitely showed especially for lucid i think um yeah. who looked much better in the genji series i would say overall than he did in the series today we had his moments but yeah i i would agree i think that also i don't know if we want to talk about the dkkt series i think that was exactly what we expected it to be i barely even remember <laughs> what happened except dk1 it. well yeah but even going into that i think we were like some of some of us predicted dk right no. Did any of you guys? No, I because no. I I was I was very committed into predicting against DK. Yeah. I remember tweeting that it was a worrying sign when almost everyone right, predicted right. Yeah. KT. Yeah, and you were right. Yeah, unsurprisingly. Yeah, it's how it's all I remember about that series was the R five Silas in game five. Yeah, true. That was dope. that was the only thing that happened in that series where I was like, ooh, that's smart. Everything else, whew. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really fun. I was at home with a bucket of popcorn, and I yeah. was having. A great time. It was <laughs> yeah. it was the perfect. I I wouldn't want to you know be here watching it, but at home it was great. I I felt pretty good about being a spacer boy for that one. I uh, I like that Valdez took took care mm. of the commentary. I think it all the been three too two much. crazy series. Yep, you've only cast three zeros so far, Max. Yep, that's what I do, brother. That's how I. And you're doing the lower finals this time. So who's yeah. getting the three zero? Oh, I guess I should just predict a 3 0, shouldn't I? Yeah. Because I'm going to be yeah. casting, so you I know should. that it's going to be a 3 just 0. Which Come team? T1. T1. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just. I guess so. I have, a, I have a feeling it's inevitable. I, I do agree. I think Home Life really had a considerable level up. But I think with another extra week, T1. And this is also what happened, not in quite the same fashion, but this is literally the same thing that we saw last summer. And then they were able to get it done as well. And I, I just, I've been hurt too many times and like, oh man, another team. But when we look at the bracket as a whole, outside of DK beating KT, basically everything that we predicted did come true. I think the only thing that really shocked us was that T1 looked really bad in the Hanwha series. But we did predict mostly that Hanwha would win. Yeah. So we're actually still getting to, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we well, did, no, right? like, you, you guys did, yeah. Yeah, when we were at the, at the whiteboard. Way back, I'm not well, saying. Yeah, 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 I'm not saying the the actual not predictions. predictions. He yeah. betrayed the whiteboard prediction. I did. Yeah. <gasps> but but dun, dun. that's that's my point. I feel like the way we got there was way more fun than expected. But we are still barreling towards. Yeah, and the whiteboard we said at the time that T1 would come back and win this yeah. time. So do I we trust still the feel that way? Well, I, is I that going right, to So yeah. my my question is, I I don't because the thing I saw from T1 today was that they skirmished and took sometimes poor fights the same way they did against Hanwa and D plus didn't handle it well. And D plus made a lot of mistakes, like a lot, a lot of mistakes fighting at inappropriate times for when their comp was coming online, being constantly split and not because T1 like had a really nice rotation and then Shoemaker's pushed off to the side on his big, he was just standing in the wrong place and he couldn't actually set up for cage zoning. I feel like D plus really dropped the ball in that series I predicted T1. I didn't think it was going to happen this way. I thought T1 was going to level up. I felt like I didn't really see T1 level up outside of some drafting adjustments. The drafting adjustments were decent, but for the most part, I felt like T1 looked the same. It was a really fast turnaround just a few days ago. Obviously, they were 3 0 by Hanwa, so there's a longer period of time now leading into that lower bracket finals to where they can improve and hopefully get some solo queue games in. But at the moment, I just I wasn't inspired, and I was much more inspired by Hanwa's series against Genji, where they played them insanely close. Like, you know, we were talking about how 
they should have won the series basically if Toby didn't show up as big as he did and played as well as he did, especially those Azir games. Um, the Hanwha might actually be in the finals already. So I compare the form I saw versus ha with Hanwha versus uh, Gen G, and then I compare T1, which felt like they kind of bumbled their way into a 3-0 through a lot of uh, mistakes from D+. I I think like to vote for T1 now, as we did on the whiteboard, is to expect a massive amount of growth before that lower bracket finals. And yes, again, a short turnaround between the, the loss to Hanwha and the series today against D+, but... Nothing inspired me to think that this time around they'll have those good reads. But they've done that. Like they've the, the reason why I'm still thinking that we're just going to end up with the same fate isn't necessarily based in what we saw in terms of gameplay, because there I would generally agree. But just the fact that this roster has just been able to make every single finals internationally outside of MSI 2023 over the last two years, right? I feel like even though they are kind of... Clearly, I think that the, the Humble Life series wasn't great. I also agree with you that to, today was somewhat rough, and there are still, like, carry ass performance, I think, is still pretty much below where it should be, even on picks that are more normal. His Camille was, uh, I think, a low, like, genuinely he one of the worst. He got a couple of later game high. Uh, game he, pre fights, he pressed R on people. Yeah, game. right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all you do. Yeah. That that's is, well, well, yeah, Camille, but, baby. <laughs> but, like, his flash carry out, the stun was carry, a little Yeah, well, yeah, well carry out, carry out failing E flashes on Camille, I think, is not something to generally we expect of this player. But I do have a lot of confidence. And I think that one of the big things that was true today is that owner is looking to be on the upswing again. I think owner is one of the players that needs to not be playing really poorly if they want to stand up against Humble Life. And I imagine that it's just going to, it's it's just happening again. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you're right. Because I think Humble's play does kind of earn it. I think there's a big difference between owner versus Lucid and owner versus Peanut or owner, owner versus Canyon. I think that like... That's fair. Lucid, like, because owner is, you know, still, like, his tenure in the LCK is half that of of canyon or of uh like of a quarter peanut. A quarter of quarter peanut. of peanut and most <laughs> players are a quarter of peanut um yeah. i think that like owner plays very differently when he's into a younger less experienced player i think that the confidence does go up and it does make sense right but i think that when you're against someone that has been so successful against you especially domestically like peanut um i think that that can get in your head i don't expect that owner is going to be the carry um but i do think that there is a high chance that we're not going to see Doran have the same good performance this time around that he did last time. I think that uh, I think that Faker is extraordinarily good, and what we saw in the draft as well does show that you do have to ban Oriana against T1, which does mess up the uh, draft phase for Hamalai Esports a little bit more. Like I think a lot of us were a little bit confused by the perma ban on the Oriana, even though we know that Faker is extraordinarily good at it. I didn't think it was an insta win. But what I saw today, uh, because of course, at time of this recording, it is just after uh, T1 smashed DK. What we saw today was that like they left it up, and that was a whoopsie. They also played Diana into it, and the early game for that matchup can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, and, true. Uh, just the way that he controlled the game, though, was uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, he played it extremely well, and his shockwaves were really solid in that game, um, especially around the Baron fight. Uh, I, I do think that is... An issue, the Nico that I think was mostly used as a pick away by D plus, mm -hmm. um, as another issue that they have to deal with. Um, I do think T one has a wider berth of draft potential. Like they have a, a wide variety of, of champions they can pick and uh, compositions they can pick that perhaps they didn't show us today and they played Vein Top because they were like, Oh man, this series seems done. And they just decided to do that instead. You know that Carrier, not to cut you off, but he did the interview on the space today, and he was like, "You know, we uh, we thought we were playing really hard to uh, execute compositions, so we went back to like easier kind of fundamentals today." And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, "You played Vein Top." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fundamentals. I mean, I guess Vayne as a whole, <laughs> yeah. I think that's like win lane, win game is the fundamental. Really, when you, you, is, when, when you, when you yeah. think about it, isn't Vayne just? It's just another form of TF. So they've played a yeah. million games with TF top. You yeah. know, he wins lane, generates a lot of gold, and instead of seeing people with a gold card, he kills them or hits them against the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, beautiful. Just chase them down. I mean, I mean that did look really good on Vayne as that well. Was, that kind of was the way that T1 won all spring and also how they won all spring last year where they had that insane run was just winning lane, 
getting gold leads, Faker roams, bot gets ahead, and then you just never fall behind. We had the stat today as well about uh, T1's like win rate when they have a gold lead at, I don't know if it was, they, it was a weird number. It was either eight minutes or like 14 minutes, and it was extremely high, um, whereas D-pluses was actually quite low. Um, most teams kind of average towards you know 70% or higher when you have a gold lead at like 20 because it's pretty hard to mess that up, like just how League of Legends works. But T1 just, they get leads, they snowball, they don't make bad decisions like D-plus does, for example, when they get to the late game and have an advantage. But I think that the way that Hanwha plays their early games and how well they've been able to match T1 in early skirmishes kind of messes with T1's whole MO. Because they're like, no, we're going to get ahead, we're going to fight constantly, and we're better than every other team at fighting early. We always win these, we have better rotations, we're faster on the play, we have perma prior with our lane uh, matchups we set up. Then they played against Hanwha and... They didn't get any of that. And they still tried to force the fights without Pryo and gave Zeri kills. You know, Viper is just like, oh, thank you very much for taking this fight. And I want to see that change. And I feel like, you know, today the series against D+, they skirmished a lot. Some of those skirmishes were in their favor that weren't against Hanwa. But I'm not ready to feel like they really changed too much just yet. And I think that they, they definitely have more than they, haven't, than they have shown today because today they didn't really have to show anything serious. Like they weren't pushed to the brink. But they will be against Hanwha. And it's really difficult to predict because the patterns we've seen from T1 in the past where they have improved, they have come in and, and played in front of crowds especially. They always have crowd advantage. The crowd is always cheering for them more than any other team. They have done it. But I, I feel like for me to sit down and predict, like, T1's done it before, so they'll do it again, it doesn't sit well with me. Like, I can't, I can't physically see the proof, so I'm not ready yet to believe. Yeah, but haven't we seen it, like, every year? The That's my I, I'm just, I'm hurt. I feel like this season is different, though. I think that Humble Life Esports made huge strides at the end of the season, especially, like, even in regular season, they won against T1, 2-1, um, to one, and that was kind of the beginning of T1 looking pretty shaky because they lost to Gen.G, they lost to Humble Life Esports, and we're like, you know, maybe we do have a third team. And then we come into this playoffs, and still, like, a decent amount of people are predicting, predicting T1, even though a lot of us did go for Humble Life Esports, and they get absolutely smashed, so just feels like a very different situation compared to other years where it's like, yeah, we had the one where Faker came in off the injury, but that was kind of like a bit of a, not an asterisk, but like a different situation from what you would normally expect, like a player coming that off was, an injury. You could see the we reason really why yeah. 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 getting better. Yeah, yeah, we don't really know like exactly where he's going to be as well, but like as they started to play more and more and he looked totally fine, we kind of saw it. So I think this is definitely a different situation. I'm kind of with Wolf on this one. Remember, and I will be predicting Humble Life Esports for <laughs> remember that like first match, the KT uh, lower bracket finals, where at that time I think what we think about Hanwha now versus T1, like we think much higher of Hanwha than I think we thought of KT. At least, I mean, Valis and I are thinking Hanwha's going to win, right? But I think how I feel about Hanwha versus T1 right now is I have a much larger gap than I thought between KT, who I thought was going to win against T1 in that lower bracket finals in summer. And then I feel like KT messed that series up a lot uh, as well. Like Faker's champion pool was like so, it was like two champions. He played like Azir and Nico. That was it. Like that was all he could play. And then they didn't ban it until game three. And then they almost got the reverse sweep, right? And then Genji was just like pff, easy peasy, right? I feel like KT really underperformed in that series. I don't think Hanwha's going to make the mis same mistake. So one of the weaknesses of Hanwha throughout the entire season was their drafts weren't very robust. Zach's like champion pool seems a little bit, you know, a little small. Mm -hmm. He's improved it a lot. So, I don't know. I, I do hear what you guys are saying, but it almost feels like a, you know, I don't want to say like a religious standpoint of view. We're like, no, I believe, <laughs> I believe in Faker. He will get it done. But like, to me, that's kind of like, I'm not ready to trust that he'll do it again because like Valda said, the circumstances this time feel so different to me. I, I, I think that the series between the two teams has been competitive in both best of threes that they've had. I think that for me, even though Hanwha Life did do a really good job against them in the first best of five, I also think that was T1 for, uh, we haven't really discussed it yet, and I, I feel like I don't yeah, really want to. Yeah, we probably want, should adju uh, address the elephant in the Yeah, room. which is right, like T1 having a lot of issues, do DDoSing, yeah. and I don't really, I don't think, like, we don't really know, and it's impossible for us to know, so I feel like we've just not been talking about it. I refuse to predict until I see some solo queue games on their <laughs> accounts. That's that's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> but but I, I think that, not necessarily because of the practice, because, again, like, we, it's impossible for us to know what impact that has, and also think it takes away from Hanba, who, as I agree with you guys, have actually look, leveled up considerably, but I do think that the mental part of it is something that 
I can imagine is a lot better now that it, they've gotten it off their chest and they're kind of uh, in a situation, hopefully now, where they're still bringing out new picks like we saw today, even though I don't know if the vein top is going to be brought out against Keen. Uh, if they do actually end up making it. I mean, Keen would be jealous if they brought it out. Keen loves playing Keen, that Keen, stuff. Keen, Keen would love to himself Keen as would well, see yeah. it and be like, I'm playing Quinn next game and then insta locks it. That's what that's but, what would happen. Yeah, but for me, it's the same reason why I was very confident that Gen Yu was going to win because I feel like Chovy has proven again and again and again that when it's do or die, he can make it work. Domestically. Domestically. Yeah. Why would Thanks, you? Reddit. I just why would you? Why would you? Why would you? That, that, yeah, I mean, it hurts all of us, but it's a- absolutely true. But domestically, he has. And for me, T one. It's only a four-hour flight to Chengdu. It's not. It's I like it's. <laughs> you know, it's on the same continent. No, no, but he it was in true. Korea, and it still didn't work. Remember? True. It's but not if about you ignore that. <laughs> you know, then maybe there's like a better chance now. It but wasn't also, Seoul, though, right? no, but it wasn't Chovy's fault. It was outside of Seoul. So. Yeah, that's true. And, and the reason there was, you know, that's that's why it because like as soon as you have to travel and you're on a team with Peanut, things go a little bit wrong, you know, because mm-hmm. he has to change living environments. He wouldn't ride the like bus. That. The other player, he rode his motorcycle to Busan. It was super weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Yeah, glad we got to see the fan cam of that. Just Peanut, you know, hairs in the wind. Like, imagine if like Genji just motorcycle. very easily sweep their way through MSI. We would be pretty sad. If uh, Peanut doesn't make it there and doesn't get to prove, I don't know. There's, there's, it. there's no way I want to say anything when it comes to that. But yeah, I think for me that series I really look forward to. It is partially faith, but it's also I think that T1 has the the thing that I really, really appreciate about the play today is that they're still very willing to play what makes them good. And I think that if they can get everyone on the same page, if some of the individual underperformances of Carrier, uh, most notably, I think today, and even Guma, I think, has still looked kind of like a. Guma's like a, ash was crazy, man. Yeah, it's 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 not even like it's not. I don't even know if it's crazy good or crazy bad. Probably more. It was more just towards. crazy. It was it wasn't a, a direction. Yeah, it was just he was he was just being. <laughs> he crazy. was he was really he being was crazy. kind of roped in by Carrier a little bit. Like yeah. Carrier was like, all right, I'm gonna bail you out quite literally. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. you, you go get him. I think that series is going to be really fun. I think it'll be very competitive. And I think that even if it ends up being like a free one, which I think is most likely, it'll be like really intense. And then whoever wins just gets free zero by Genji. I, actually, I don't know about that. I don't that. think there's any chance for either of them. I don't think Hanwha Life Esports come back and do anything. I I, I don't know about that. I, I feel like if Hanwha goes to the finals, so. they play 10% better or Chovy just happens to play 10% worse on the day. I feel like it's going to be about what happens on that day. I wouldn't predict Hanwha right now, but we'll see how they play, obviously, in the lower bracket finals. If they crush T1, though, they have the momentum. And I think Chobi if Hanwha win, day, like... they stand a chance against Genji. Yeah, I, I think they if do. If they T1, lose, I, think, no. I don't think Hanwha are going to win. <laughs> That's what I think. It's guaranteed. <laughs> True. You got maxed. So, so, the... so, you know, they will play in the lower finals. So that, you know... That it has a been buff. a benefit so it far. Is that buff. has been the buff. So maybe I do have to change I, my stance a little bit. Well, it, I mean, it hasn't. It hasn't. I, I think that I've we've seen examples of Gen G last spring where it was a buff, and then last summer we saw why it's not a buff. Because if you're overly reliant on something in the finals, you get banned out and you just lose. It's true. So true. maybe T1 will ban Nautilus. I just feel like Hanwha Esports really pulled down all the stops in that series, and they got stopped by one player, and that one player is still there. So, like, you're going to develop, you're going to get better, you're going to learn more from the drafts, maybe, but also Genji will, and then you're going to go up, and then it's like, well, Tovi's still there. Can we even beat this guy? I mean, we played our best, and it really felt like Hanwha Life Esports were playing, like, a sick best of five. They should have won, and the joke was like, well, Hanwha Life Esports won four games, but Tovi, you know, won three of them, so, you know. He just won it for the entire team by himself. And I think that that, so. on one hand, it was a really impressive performance, and it's the MVP performance. That's the that's the series where you're like, that's right, like the MVP is certified, like it's proof. Mm. We've we've had past seasons where the MVP comes through, then flops in the playoffs, and we're like, ooh. Um, Got it, Woods. Yeah, <laughs> KT has yeah. has <laughs> all pro number one. We'll get to that later. <laughs> oh um, boy. But I do think that the fact that Chovy had to do it on his own is not actually a strength of G- G- Genji. Now, obviously, if the rest of the team plays 
you know, 10% better each, then obviously, I, like, they Keen, smash, really right? Well, Keen and Kenyon were right? also fine. No, like, I feel like the bottom lane was, was really rough. And Kenyon was just, like, Sejuani. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's, but that's potato, not as a potato. Like, yeah. yeah, but that's because... And he, that's not his fault. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, like, this Sejuani. is something that Trovi actually spoke about as well. He was like, when we did the interview after the game, he was like, I carried today. Like, yes, today it was me. But the thing about Gen G is the fact on any given day, whoever's performing can be supported by everyone else, right? And Trevi's had games where he's played Karma, right? And it's Pays that's popping off. Uh, he's had games where they've just jumped on the the keen carry train of his Cassante monster type situation, mm-hmm. right? Like, we've seen that many times. They could play Brand Jungle again, and Canyon could have his time in the sun if they'd like to. We know that he can carry on Lee Sin if you want. Like, I think that in their series against Hanwha, they relied on Trovi because on the day, Trovi was feeling it. And I think when you do have someone that's like in really good form and like even though they may have lost game one or something like that, they're like, guys, I'm playing so well today. Like, just give me the resources. He almost Let's go. carried game one by himself. But that's as what well. I mean. That's exactly <laughs> my point, right? So like that happens and they're like, all right, all aboard. Let's hop on the trophy bus. You I know? think there's going to be some big adjustments for Hanwha because, you know, Trovi relied on one champion in the series, which is probably a boon to him if they ban the Azir, then he gets to do something else. But yeah. also, um, I think there's a lot to study from that, and they, they saw it with their own eyes right in front of them. And I think there were some big errors of judgment from Viper, who played far too aggressively after game one, I would say. And That, that one dash forward on Zeri will yeah. be etched yeah. in, in my mid. brain, yeah. dude. It's yeah. very Jackie Love. Mm. Both him and Pace did a lot of, did a lot of that. So uh, I feel like I'm not ready to predict that series until I see Hanma Life's form. Right now, would obviously, if someone put a gun to my head, I would lean towards Gen G. Um, but... I, I just I don't know like I uh, before what about this C1 make it before this series or before this playoffs I would have told you guys as we did on the whiteboard like Genji win this no matter what there's like no chance it's three zero like I even I was the guy who wrote the three zero on the board now I'm not so sure and that's exciting because it's you know we've gone to most of our finals the last few seasons knowing okay we know exactly what's gonna happen but and- I, spring was a big upset spring last year was cool that was surprising yeah that was the only one in. Since we joined, because no, when we joined the LCK, it was just double dumb one. And yeah. then it was mm, yeah. all uh, according to plan. If T1 beat Homolife Esports in a best of five, do they get stronger and have a chance against Gen no. G? I or... think Gen G 3 0 them, and it would be an 11 0 if given the chance. I think that the problem for T1 is I that <laughs> event, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that eventually, like these type of. I think that T1 have a great chance of beating Gen G when they meet at MSI. i'm not even i'm not not even joking like it's like uh, and with with stuff like this i truly truly and i think a lot of people i've seen even a lot of fans of other teams say this and people that aren't fans of the lck i really hope chovy wins an international title because the reality is this guy didn't win anything for like three years and then since he won he hasn't stopped like he's just been but wait if he gets the download on MSI and international tournament. Well, that's my point. Then does he just win forever? Yeah, well, I hope so. Because like he's forgotten how to lose in the in, in the LCK. Yeah. And so like if he learns how to win internationally, is isn't it like every single reel going to be like Chovy lifting like every trophy? Like we just cut forward to like. 2035 and it's like just Chovy with a couple of gray hairs lifting another trophy and he's like, aha, another one to put in the back pocket. <laughs> Oh, God. I would subscribe to that. That sounds fun. I'm kind of scared of that reality. <laughs> Good I Lord. feel like one thing about T1 that I felt since playoffs started is they don't have a one single player who you can trust is going to pop off. Like, Hanwa had uh, Viper. You know, uh, KT, we thought, was going to be probably BDD. Um, didn't end up coming true. And some thought Pyoshik, to be honest. I thought Pyoshik. Kwangdong, we knew Cuz was there right you, you knew that was going to be the guy genji has chovi and t1 they kind of live or die by each other like i feel like there's not one player like, it used to be faker you know we were like oh this guy is so incredibly good his decision making in terms of his sideline pressure where he's able to turn team fights i haven't felt that from him that much in in playoffs obviously in regular season it was a lot of that but that's one thing that i feel like is is missing to me about t1 i think it's still zeus even though he's also sometimes to his own detriment i feel like he's one of the most warping players that's still in the in the playoffs at this point i think actually this big strength of hanwa for me is that they are 
probably, and I can't believe I'm saying this about a team with Doran, but in playoffs, they've looked like the most... I don't, like, I don't think... Viper has had the worst performance individually, probably, and that's... Like, he had a couple of bad moments, but also it's because the bar for Viper is extremely high because he's Viper, right? Yeah. And, and we collectively still, I think, rate him as... I think AD carries in general haven't looked great this playoffs. Mm. The bottom lanes have just The kind bottom of, lanes have I just not like yeah, aiming the most, strangely enough. I think Amy's, I, like, Amy's I was like, yeah, I think aiming was the best. <laughs> Isn't Lucian. that weird? His yeah, Lucian. his Lucian. Shout out to pretty good too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fair. Yeah. I mean, Zekka uh, arguably really a little bit more consistent than Viper. He helped set Viper up and then Viper pops off later, but it wasn't Viper necessarily yeah. doing it on his own. And, and like, actually, as, as uh, I think we all read this, well, Zekka also had a great series. I feel like Humble Life actually is the most consistent team, but I think that for T1, and that's also why if T1 do end up winning, we do have to they do have to find a way to have Zeus not just lose to Doran again for what feels like the <laughs> I don't know how many of time. That's I don't know what it is. Like I swear like Doran just has it in his brain. Like he Remember just he knows T how Zeus moves. Like he just Who he was just it knows. Against that he like mind controlled him into TPing. I forgot who he was. Was it Keen? I think it was Keen on yeah, Urgot. No, mind like Doran yeah, mind just stands all. there. Yeah. Doran just stands there, looks at Keen, and Keen's like, "I'm gonna TP into five people and die." <laughs> yeah. That was game one, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He managed to get the yerk out of his head oh. after that. Uh, <laughs> shout outs to any Animorphs watches twenty years ago. Um, yeah, thank thank wow. goodness that one. Uh, I wasn't was a okay. watcher; so, I was a reader. But yeah, so yeah sorry. <laughs> that's dope. That's better to be uh, a reader. For, for me, the main thing why I feel like, uh, even though obviously Chovy is the obvious argument for Gen G, is that if Hanwha Life couldn't beat. Gen G on a day where it might have been Pays's worst series. I mean, probably the DK series was probably worse than this one, but it was still like I think him and Lahens have really not done a great job. If they weren't able to capitalize in that series, I'd be pretty skeptical that they'd be able to do it when we get to the finals. Yeah. Um, I think it's now time for us to delve towards the thing that we probably don't really want to talk about, but we kind of have to. Uh, it's one of these things. Um, Let's talk about All Pro and our MVP votes. I think we can get MVP out of the way. It was Chovy. It was always going to be Chovy, and we all voted Chovy. So. But who did you vote for second and third? No idea. I just, just curious. Curious. I wanted to, I wanted to not vote for anyone second or third, to be honest. Yeah, I, I voted just for wanted Faker to, second. I think I did someone like some, that. Some, I think I did Zayus. I, I went, yeah, some I went Zayus. Zayus, with Zayus yeah. yeah, Zayus, and then third was... Uh, I, think Vi Viper. I think I did Viper, yeah. I think I, did, Viper. Uh, I think I did Viper as well Yeah, uh, for third. So, but there were some different interpretations of how the vote is supposed to be uh, given. Um, the beauty is, is that the vote can be given <laughs> whichever way you envision it, because yeah. there isn't a set criteria. There are, there are none. There are no criteria at all. No. So you just get to choose three in any order based on anything at all. So you could. So you just base it on like, the name. Yeah, right? you could also base it on like how many boxes of fried chicken you expect that they could eat in a row. You could do it alphabetically. Like that, you well, could do it alphabetically. In the, yeah. in the case of Ox <laughs> and some of the other people, like I saw Get some some of like the media people, they voted for like Cuz third and stuff like that. For MVP? Yeah, for MVP. Yeah, it's because most it's the most valuable player. player for that team, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, okay, you're the best player of this entire split or whatever. So it's like, who is most valuable to their team? So Ox voted for Pleta. I saw a lot of Cuz votes as well. So that's it's just most valuable player. That's how they're voting for that, so... Yeah, that's not how I voted, but yeah, a lot of people and, and that's and that's fine, that right? Like that's the fun part is that we all get to. I feel like All Pro is a little bit more set in stone as the it's just the players that have individually looked the best. But with MVP, I actually really like seeing what different people's thoughts are. Of hey, even though DRX was a bottom tier team, if they didn't have Pleda, even the games where they look like mildly competitive, I actually think if you put Pleda than... into a lot of the upper tier teams. They would look better after this playoffs. I'm pretty. I I I'm yeah. inclined to agree with you Spicy. on that one. And the cuz looking the cuz forward is another... to DK Pleta next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. The, the cuz uh, vote is another is such a good example because do you can you honestly say that Kwangdong would be where they are now if they had Young J as a jungler? I'm pretty sure they would have bombed out again. Absolutely not. Yeah, no. Right, for Bro me, MVP playoffs, is, is kind of like which play which player is the most valuable in terms of if you were building a roster, you'd pick this player first because they're the strongest player in the entire Same. tournament. Um, yeah. And they don't have any glaring weaknesses where you're like, okay, this player is maybe the strongest player most of the time, but not all the time kind of thing. Like the player that's most strong and also most consistent. And for me, that was very clearly Chovy. And I think for a majority of people, that was the case as well. 
I think it was almost unanimous. Might have been yeah. unanimous outside yeah. of like the people that were not allowed to vote for him. Yeah. 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 Who were the Gen Coach G voters? Like, I think it was like Lahens. Lahens hmm? was a voter. Like a couple of the Genji people. I don't know, Lahens and Coach Kim, I assume. Something like that. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. And yeah, Coach Kim just put something. down all of the T1 players, I'm pretty sure, for everything. Makes sense. <laughs> um, for, for me, the thing, because I, I actually I, I do did vote mostly based on who I felt was the biggest individual contributor to their team, which makes Chovy, it's so much more insane that I think still voting for him because he has Kenyon, Keen, and then I think Pays is, is the, the, the least impressive, but he still has won every single LCK split he's been a part of, although with some caveats, given his team. And Lahens, right? Like, that, those are his teammates, and he's still so much of a standout. So the MVP vote, I also think people weren't really upset about at all, because guess who ended up winning with an extremely large margin? Yeah, it, it was, was Chovy. It was Chovy. So everything was okay. But you know what wasn't okay? <laughs> my votes, baby. Oh, let's my get to God. all pro. I feel People like, got um, so upset with my all pro so, votes, and I just I I lap it up, dude. I love it. I think the biggest thing here is that a lot of our viewers are global viewers, and they might look at our votes and agree whole wholeheartedly and say like, oh yeah, of course, like Zeus was the best in the top lane, and like Viper was the best AD carry. I think those those are kind of views that are held in the global scene as as mostly yeah, the yeah. majority. Just to, but um, we got so much flame. Yeah. from the Korean side that there were multiple like threads about us like you know we yeah, don't know I, what we're talking about we should listen to the Korean commentators we should we should, <laughs> we should quit I yeah. just want to uh, talk about which we, votes we our did. votes are not correct and the votes we did oh yeah Thank you. great ramp up <laughs> shouldn't interrupt you I, I went a I little apologize. bit ham this year okay let's, let's I went a little bit well, we'll, we'll talk about the third one they we were get unhappy but with were. In, in general what we went for for all pro with the exception of Max going for Keen instead of Zayas which I think no one would really disagree with given that we all voted Keen second mm -hmm. was Zayas Zayas, Canyon, Chovy, Viper, Carrier. We had uh, mostly... Uh, Huni voted Huni for Pace. Pace. Huni voted for Pace. Traitor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Huni, Huni got saved. He's, he's not fired yeah. um, by the Koreans. Yeah. Then when we got to the second, that's where, that's where some of the issues arose. Because if you, if you didn't catch the all-pro vote, it's the entirety of Genji and Carrier by one point. Mm. And do you know what the do you know what the hilarious thing about this? I saw it and I was like, oh man, people are gonna be so mad that Pays got first place. Mm -hmm. And people were like on the global global side, yeah, I assume it was a lot of you guys. Um, and I saw it, I was like, oh thank god, at least Carrier managed to get in there. And then I find out that apparently like people are writing <laughs> essays to us and sending us in like into the DM saying, like, but you just don't understand the shot calling. And like you cannot quantify shot calling. Let me just say this right now: if your your team re relies on you for your shot calling, that should never actually go in who, to who, whether something's being voted for. Who did you ever. put? Who did you put second again? <laughs> for what? <laughs> for, for what? <laughs> I put Barrel. No, not for his shot know, calling. He was, he was individually flashy. No, he was playing well. He was playmaking. Playmaking and shot calling are not the same okay. thing. I just, I just want to. They are not the same I, I'm thing. I'm getting out of the comments. I, just yeah, I, have yeah. seen, I have seen a lot of comments. I have received numerous direct messages uh, online about Lahenza shot calling. <laughs> And how valuable it is, and how strong it is, and how much he's would, developed I, the players on this team. He also has been a great uh, tutor to Pays. Are we, we also like in agreement that Pays is worse now than he was yes. last year? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Good. So, especially after playoffs. Yes. <laughs> I I want those people who have sent me those DMs to please send me the comms because we don't actually have access to those and I would really appreciate if you guys could send me the shot calling from the hand so I can actually see exactly which moments don't even need to sub it down. he speaks Korean yeah, I, can, yeah. I can understand I speak Korean Free so I, would, I, love, I would love for you guys I don't know where you you guys probably shouldn't hack the LCK and steal these comms they don't belong to you <laughs> but since you have them and you know exactly how much of an impact he's made with the shot calling and exactly which fights he's calling I'd, I'd really appreciate if you sent those to me because I could probably learn a lot from that. I also don't care because if, if you <laughs> actually vote based on that... That's what I'm saying. You can't know. You can't even know. But I'm saying you can't yet. even know no, what you can't he does. Even know, but, but even if, if you, you do know... know Screw you! It's, no, we're never going to use that for votes. It's about your gameplay. It's about how you play and what you do on the Rift. It's not about what you theoretically and told somebody else to do. Like, La screw that. They still get the La credit. Lahens has died, like, in lane randomly so many times this split. I still put him for. I still think that he's a top three support. Yeah, but he's not top one. No, he's not. I think uh, he's a top 
six support. <laughs> I think he's a top three support. Yeah, Pleather third, right? I mean, Pleather is definitely ahead of him. <laughs> after this, no, after all, like third, almost one hundred percent. After max. these playoffs, yeah. Well, I think Delight third for regular. Like we, we were talking a lot about playoffs, right? And I, I think the important thing is these opera votes were for the regular. Yeah, it was split. for regular season. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, in hindsight, being like, well, Delight has looked like the best support by far during playoffs, which. I think is kind of a kind of a yeah, no brainer. Kind of looked a little bit it, that's, towards the end of the that's, season. That's a little bit unfair, but I actually things like this always make me a little bit sad because I actually think it's so cool, and I would love if there was more constructive discussion. Which is the internet. That's not what's going to happen. But <laughs> in the in the way that the perception of how we rate players. Because our views align a lot with the global side, and that's partially because yeah. we influence the opinion of the global fans. And but there's are also influenced by the opinions and, of the global. Well, exactly, fans, right? right? Well, so yeah. that's 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 a back and forth that where even people who don't watch a lot of LCK will tune into games and have similar opinions to us. Yeah. And I think the fact that our views are pretty considerably different from a lot of the Korean side is actually like really cool because it shows the depth of League of Legends, and they can look at a game and take away very different things. And instead, it's just like, nope, nope, that was, you were wrong. <laughs> You're actually. dumb that, because that was, you don't that agree was, with the Korean commentators. That was commentators. all wrong. Yeah. Which, I mean, so I, I, I just want to say the reason, the, the reasons I vote for All Pro is who I think the best person in the role is, the second best person in the role is, and the third best person in the role. Based on individual performance. Based on individual performances. Individually, some people might vote like, I would like to put this roster together because it would be the best team. And then you can get into almost like a fantasy roster idea where you could be like, well, this would be the best team because they know each other well and I want to put this player in because like they used to play together here or something like that. I think the Korean casters maybe vote a little bit more that way where they're like, well, if I just keep all of Genji together and put them all first, they're already first place in regular season, so this would be the best team. that Like, if, for example, if you were going to send it to an international tournament or have it compete against the second All-Pro and the third All-Pro, if you wanted the best one, maybe you could do it that way. Uh, but that's not how I vote. I vote personally for what who I think is the best player in each role for individual performances. So if you look at my votes, that's what you're going to see because that's how I do it. But also, I think there's an unfortunate truth that um, a lot of fans don't really want to hear, and that's that the casters are a lot less biased than the fans because the fans they follow. <laughs> yeah, obviously, well, a lot of the fans <laughs> are to, like not to everyone. I, I, I don't you're know. You're very biased towards this player or this team because I don't know whatever reasons they come up with. There was a bunch in one of the essays you guys all got. Funnily enough, I got nothing, which I'm a little bit offended about. Like, man, <laughs> I, why did you guys single, just vote, found not this a single DM? Not a single hate thread. I nothing. Hang on. Um, let, let me let but, me just say like, where, no, yours is like basically. It's basically no, yeah, I'm basically pretty, the same with yeah. you know the majority Maybe of they just us like on the global you. side. Maybe, um, but Fair. I highly doubt it. So the fans, they're following their team. They want their player to win because they love that player, and that's understandable. They're very passionate about it. That's all fine. But when it comes to voting for like the best player in a role, we're going to. Based on watching every single game, the fans will follow only their team against other mm -hmm. teams, right? We follow every single game. We watch their performance against, like, bro, and be like, well, you know, Lenz died here. He wasn't great. He didn't have a big impact. You know, somebody else on his team was carrying, kind of taking the, the spotlight away. So in our objective brains, we're like, okay, well, he wasn't as flashy. He wasn't as impactful as someone like Carrier, who spent the majority of those games, like, solo carrying, playing weird stuff, showing that he could probably play three different roles if he wanted to. Um, and then Delight, who's basically the team fight and gauge god and made it very obvious. Whereas Lahens is very nuanced, right? He is a strong player, but from the objective view, he's not nearly as flashy, not making nearly as big of an impact. And he makes way more mistakes. And I and think he makes that a we, lot more mistakes. So I think for we us, take like, away a lot based on mistakes that we see as well. Yeah. I think that there is a lot of that that comes into it. Like, it's not even necessarily about, like, how many times have they done this thing really good? But it's more about like how like, consistent how well is this player? Improved paces can like play. How much yeah. we trust them? Frankly, <laughs> like, it's, it's like how much yeah. we trust them to yeah. be good all, every day. And that's why that's yeah. why Pays didn't. Besides Huni, didn't make our number one. Same reason. Like he had a lot of Did mistakes. Did he make my top three? No, he didn't. No, I just made sure that Lehens and Pays weren't in my top three. And, and I think that's fair because yeah. you're entitled to your opinion. And you know, I. Yeah. I thought Pays was probably second best. Um, and I thought the 80 carry pool this season was not as stacked as it has been in but the past years. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's like another point as well, right? Is that like, I, I like to vote for chefs. And a team doesn't work if there's too many Fair chefs all. in the kitchen, right? 
I, I vote for the, the the players that are the ones making the plays, doing the things, and stuff well, like that. Just, right? just, just, to, and and especially I think for third opera, that's great because to put in perspective, Max's third opera was perfect. Who I think that's the most negotiable one, but Doran has his flaws, right? So I yeah, understand the reasoning for Doran that because he's not the chef. Then you have Cuz, obvious, obvious. Uh, then you have Showmaker, obvious. obvious yeah. Then you have Deft. Well, not as obvious. Obvious, I'll, I'll, obvious I'll, death bias. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll obvious yeah. death bias. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, but I can, I can sneak a deft <laughs> into third. I can sneak a deft into third. And right? then delight. Atlas <laughs> also didn't have owner in his top three, which a lot of us did. Not everybody, because there like, was Cuz and Pioche. No, Cuz well. is fine. But yeah. like, yeah, this isn't like, oh, we, we think the T1 players are great or anything. Like a lot of people said, like, oh, we're biased towards Garia because, you know. No, yeah. it's, because it's just because but I, that I was player also... performed better. The, the way that I was thinking about it as well was at this exact moment, as the season was ending, which players do I think are in the best position? Because I think that like recency bias does come into it just a little bit. I yeah, think of course. if you were to ask me to do the same thing right now, would any of those KT players be on that list? Hell no. Absolutely not. But from the position that I was in, I was watching a KT that was improving that we had a fair bit of hope would make it at least to round two of the playoffs. I think it was relatively clear in the pretty unanimous yeah. votes towards KT. So I think that I I do a lot of these players are in really good positions to make deep runs afterwards. And I was yeah. obviously I wrong. I mean, round two is a lot more important well, than round one outside well, yeah. of like scores, right? Yeah. Like getting wins is important, but your form at the end is a lot more important than your form Well, that's at what the I think. You know? and, and so... I think a lot of it needs to be based on where the players are at at this point well, in time. Not like, oh, but he had such a good round one. He should probably have, like, yeah. uh, you know, so much more. Like, I don't think that that's, well, the, I don't think that's relevant because he then fell off. It's it's you know? also yeah. perfectly explained by, ironically, the the perfect vote because like perfect is first best of five was really bad because he's a rookie. And I think he really crumbled under the pressure, didn't mm. deal with it well. Not but, technically a rookie, by the way. Uh, yeah. If it wasn't... <laughs> Thank you, actually. Because every wasn't time perfect, I hear that, I get mad. It rookie of the year. It doesn't count. Because, because his, his arc, like round one, he was he was quite rough. And then he grinded a lot. And he became a really solid top laner. And then it mm. wasn't great in the series against DK, but who cares? And there's obviously, there's always going to be players that, or in my case... When I talk about challengers, probably should have taken it with, with a little grain of salt, right? Mm -hmm. When a challenger player, I'm like, I'm always going to get excited about them. Everyone has those players. That's just the reality of the situation. But I feel like specifically with how All Pro works, because we see every single game, you get like the, as, as I think the best example was like a random game against DRX where you die three times in lane. That can be the difference maker because no. even though it isn't consequential... It's going to leave a bad taste in, on your brain. You're going to have like you're that, still remember. that and weird feeling like, huh, well, he wasn't that solid all the time for some reason. Oh, yeah, it was this game against DRX, you know. And it's yeah. not just one game that dictates your votes before anyone makes I think comment. aiming is the biggest victim of this on the global side across... Oh, 100%. Like if I could do it again, I would 100% have aiming in third. I, think I don't I think would I would. I think no. he really stepped it up for playoffs. I think Pace, I would still take Pace over aiming. But, no, 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 as know, in, like, if we're going to do this for based on how we feel about these players right now. So oh, no. Like, oh, you yeah, do yeah. it yeah. immediately yeah. after whichever game. <laughs> I was saying maybe now. he's first, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the, the interesting thing about that is that, obviously, we value certain things differently than the Korean side does, and that's why everybody gets a vote, because otherwise, you know, if it was a fan vote, like, Faker would win top, all pro as well as like jungle all pro as well as support all pro. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're, they're, you can't actually vote those are not eligible, but well, just you, be you guys know what I mean. And and so like we have a, a bunch of different minds here in media who have a different perspective as well. And like I know they have Orcs' perspective now. <laughs> he has actually trained That's them. Good. It's insane. They've gotten a lot better. Yeah, yeah but, but like they they have their own perspective, right? And they're they're allowed to vote, and that's and that's fine. And until we change the rules, and maybe they don't get to vote, or maybe they decide they don't want to vote in the in the future. Like they have a vote, so they get to have their own unique perspective, and they might be the ones who tip the scales because everyone's watching the same games. It's Makes just it a lot more interesting. Yeah. yeah, actually. But also the only way that they can tip the scales is if somebody else it. votes the same way, right? Like, this is the, this is the whole point, yeah. is that, like, it's never one person. Yes, you can single out someone and say, like, oh, if you hadn't have voted like this, it would have done this. I do it to Chronicler <laughs> weekly. Like, actually, almost every single day. I do day. get a lot of lot Someone of didn't vote it. for yeah. Beryl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Like, and, and maybe that's why Beryl made my list, because I was still upset that Chronicler denied Beryl his Wait, how are you blaming POG? it on me when you're <laughs> arguing against doing that exact thing to people? Well, what I'm saying is I understand that feeling. 
And you can you can single somebody out and you can be like, oh, it's because of you if you had a change. But also anybody else who had have not voted for that thing could have also changed, right? Then why do you always single out me? Because you react like this and it's hilarious. It and funny. I love it. It's pretty funny. That's yeah. Actually, that's actually a very good point. Because yeah. if I did day. it to Wolf, he'd be like, yeah. No, that happened. And there were Sorry there were like, <laughs> there were a lot of other people that had like um <laughs> there were a lot of other people that had like uh you know Zeus top or Caria you know Zeus first or Caria first right but I think we, I mean obviously we got a lot won. of we got, got a lot, we got a lot of attention because we as a group in, like in this block of like global commentary did it all together so they were like ah. huh. oh so they thought that maybe Why are we you guys skewing the vote so much you know yeah, it's, that definitely doesn't it's happen like when, on the other side. Um, just well, yeah, to, it absolutely just so that it does <laughs> yeah. all the time. But also, so like, we, we didn't we didn't collude. We we put no, we our votes in and then no. discussed them afterwards. I'm just saying that it turned out. Yeah, that no, way. you're well, so also, it I think changed our, the way the vote happened. Our votes have more variety than the Korean side's votes do in, in general. I would say, except Even though Faker. Some, yeah, there was some there were some like uh, discrepancies on on the Korean side as well. But for the most part, like you know, especially when you get into second and third, we have a lot of differences. Um, First was pretty obvious to us. Like, besides Huni, we all thought Viper was a stronger player than than Pays this season. Um, I and mean, I would love to, to talk to the Korean casters about it. And maybe we'll get a chance to over the next few days. Um, I also like. I also think maybe we don't have to. Maybe well, like it's just to. fine. It would like, just I, be fun. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'd just be curious to see what they have to say because I'm sure they have good reasons. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 of course yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> they that's also... the thing. Like, I trust that they definitely do and they're well founded yeah. and it's great. So I'm just happy to let them go. And I would, let, never, let I would never send them angry messages about their Yeah, <laughs> No, exactly. <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> but also, it's like, it, it doesn't really matter that much. What it is is recognition for who played really well throughout the season. And I think, judging by what we saw for All Pro, like, for me, outside of Pays getting first, I don't think that like much of it is very offensive. Like I think that this, like I think that there's a lot of opinions based on this, where it's like this is what goes into the history books. This is what when you look at the spring season 2024, you will see these are the players that were standouts, and that's what has to be relevant. And for me, first All Pro is the only one that really matters. I it don't is. think third oh, or 100%. second actually matters that much at all, yeah. um, because I think first dictates the players in each role that were the most dominant. And so the fact that Viper isn't in that, I think, is a real shame because I think that his uh, efforts this season should have been recognized because he has had stinker seasons before on Hummel Life Esports, for example, on Remember the 10th place? Yeah, it wasn't that great. Happened. So I think that like him getting the recognition for playing so well, I think is a big miss that we don't get to have that. That's the only thing that makes me sad. Yeah, and all this. of us went for Caria and a lot of other people went for Caria, as you yeah. very nicely pointed out, and that is why he rightly won first place yeah. not because we not because colluded. you voted for barrel yeah <laughs> not because, because we colluded voted to for uh, as well yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, any, that's any one story. single person who voted for carrier uh instead of lehens has the exact same impact that atlas has for, for not voting for. but Le also Le i just want everyone to know i am really glad that i didn't vote for lehens because i think carrier 180 percent deserves it yeah. And so if I, me yeah. voting for Beryl third, I am actually Superman. You know, I am the one that, that saved it the all vote. Along. Yeah. New I FM tried Korea to do post. it for the pays votes as well, but I failed because he didn't even make my list I, also. I, I feel like, so, so with Pays specifically, although obviously his playoff series has been really bad, I feel like Pays also is kind of... But is, he can't cook. He can't be a chef. His whole team chefs. Yeah. His whole top side chef. He, like he never should be on any of those lists. Because he can't be. His team's too well, good. Well, no, because I, I think that like we've gone f we've gone from Pays is the, the greatest, AD, which is not true, to now I feel like we've gone, outside of, again, this is for the regular split, I feel like your people are saying like, Pays is actually just, he's actually just that. No, he's just a passenger. He's just, he's a, he's a, and above, it's fine. Boom, it's good. Boom, he has to. He's, a, he's, he's yeah. doing his job. Yeah. Yeah. No, but he's, he's just like, on boom, a boom. team with Chovy and Kane. He's, he's, yeah. yeah. So and we're not. And like I have watched this guy in Challengers as well. I think he's a great AD carry, and I think that he wouldn't have nowhere near the success that he would have had. But he still would be great. I still think he might be contesting on another team. We could live in a world where he's where Jiwoo is right now. Yeah. Could be the, actually. But the thing is, like, he might make my list at that point. Yeah. But the thing is, like, yeah. you have to demonstrate that. Yeah. Uh, and so, no, who cares, yeah. chronically? You can say whatever you want about what Pays is capable of, but no, if he I'm... didn't do it, then who cares? <laughs> no, he's yeah, not that's, attacking that's you. Not... No, he's, he's not. <laughs> you know, I'm so confused. Like, but that, that's my 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 whole point is is that like you have to have done it in the majority of games. Yeah. 
And so, like, yes, we all agree. Like, Pace is an incredible player. We watched him play all last year. Well, I, I still went for Viper. Like, I'm not... Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just went off, off on a tangent. It's right, not... right, right. But, like... I think he was better than... I think he was more consistent across team fights and damage output positioning than Guma was. Agree. And so I put him over Guma. Everybody else be, uh, behind Guma... Unfortunately, for me, doesn't get to fit in this conversation. To I be honest, like, AD carry was kind of a close. mess. I really should have put Jiwoo yeah. third. I Hannah, think that faker knew. <laughs> Hannah, 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 Jiwoo, these players were, like, knocking on the door of, like, the door that, like, My, that I was actually like, is knocking from I right was, now. like, Deft and Hannah. Like, that was who I was, Did you, like, tossing up. And I was like, maybe Deft is the less offensive one, so I'll just put that one in. Did you guys see Jiwoo make any mistakes in playoffs? I didn't. Hell yeah, brother. I, I think he actually had zero losses in playoffs so far. Exactly. Perfect KDA as well. <laughs> uh, I just one day, I, one day G will be freed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I like is that this does spark so much conversation. Like yeah. I watched the the Monty Wolf show as well. Like you guys were really going into it. I know Monty was very passionate <laughs> about Viper. Did you watch Ox's co stream of challengers? He was going ham on he that. He was. As well. That was a and lot of fun to watch. What, what I liked watching was everyone in Ox's co stream saying how based Atlas's votes were. <laughs> As I'm reading all of the hate messages that I'm getting from the Korean fans. Yeah. And so, like, there's this chat over here being like, oh, man, look at Atlas and how cool he is. And there's over here, you should um, do, like, the thing in Minecraft and stuff. And, like, I was, it was just <laughs> in-game. Yeah, yeah. In-game. In-game. I, I you should just, quit your job in-game. <laughs> I don't think any of our votes were egregious. Unreasonable. Or unreasonable yeah. at all. No, not And at I all. think if, if, you know, there was a list where, like, I had, like, three bro players in like a few of the position or or you know if i was like actually yeah. guys i think, I think a cheeky Teddy's dundon the third actually carry. sounds fine to me but, yeah <laughs> no or you have like I, I bulldog dundon, on the first not, all pro it's it, like that's not if okay, i did that right? like, you know i think good. i think some of the frustration and, and anger could be warranted because it just seems like you know academically wrong but also it's still my right if i voted for it uh, but all i'm saying is if if the votes that we had here were ridiculous you know, I, I would never apologize for it because we don't have to do that. But I would be like, okay, I understand some of the, the frustration, some of the hate, like some We of the messed anger. up. It I'd but, love to he hear your reasoning about but, putting bro on the, <laughs> the yeah. top of the all pro. But, like, we've explained our votes. We've explained our reasons. It's really important to be passionate about all pro because that's what it's for. Like, it's to actually celebrate some of the best players and their roles. You know, even if you didn't end up winning regular season or you didn't end up going to the finals, you could still be celebrated here as KT was last season, even though they didn't make the finals, even though they all got all the all pro votes. It's a cool celebration of like which players people want to champion. And that's each individual person's decision. And so please be passionate, but also please don't be angry and please don't send threats or DMs and, be, and <laughs> yeah. crazy stuff to us because that's just not, this is actually supposed to be a celebration of players and like, your player's going to get another chance next season. So it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. And also, like, you know, sometimes, yeah. No, I, I, I and you're never you going to change perfectly. my mind, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just yeah. going to vote the way I'm going to vote. I actually, yeah, I want to uh, also, when it comes to all pro voting, I would like to also have some of Faker's advice, which is just be better. Just hit, just be better. Don't die. Hit everything. Yeah. Yeah. Faker always Make says. it obvious. Don't be like the Bene Gesserit, like whispering <laughs> to like no whispers. The, the emperor and shit. Like, no, we don't want to hear about like the shot calling or like, oh, he's so good at getting the team all together on a good mood. Like, that doesn't factor into all. Otherwise, if it was based Otherwise, on I just put everybody. peanut in every role. Yeah. <laughs> if it was if it was based on vibes, my first all pro would be Dun <laughs> yeah. Right? You just put the whole Nong squad. Right? Right? No, like, no, 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 no. It'd be Dun. I thought about this a lot. It would be Dun Dun. Then obviously Lahens has to be there. Yeah, peanut. Sure. Yeah. I'm trying like who who would be who's the vibes with Bulldog? Well, it's kind of messed up. Like, uh, Umpty's not on the list, uh, list because he developed all of Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, he yeah, why don't we vote And he's the list. Jungle King of Anano. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you haven't watched it yet, by the way, you need to watch the, just the LCS Twitter tweeted it. Just Umpty being like, everyone always said I was shit. And guess what? I'm the fucking Jungle King of Anano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, make it obvious. Be the best player. Be flashy. That's why Carrie is getting votes. That's why Delight's getting votes. That's why Lahens is not getting votes. Mm -hmm. That's why Beryl got votes. Yeah. That's why, you know, Deft got votes, Pio I guess. Shik. I don't know. Yeah. Can't speak <laughs> to that one. Pioshik, that's why, you know, that's why we vote for these things, not because we're biased. Because they for demonstrate. Carrie. Yeah. Because that's... the players demonstrate <laughs> yeah. these plays on the rift. Like, and as soon as you see that, like, I think that that's, uh, that's justifiable. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of our global viewers will be like, 
you you guys were so base. Like we loved your votes; those were so fantastic, and that's part of the beauty. Right? Or you're, because... or you're like, I look forward to the Korean reaction <laughs> yeah. posts about this. Yeah. Or, or you're like, I can't wait. Like... Just don't threaten. <laughs> they us they suck. Weird. Yeah, uh, I think. And just uh... Uh, we also need to let everyone know that we did in fact watch every game. Um, we were here. There is video evidence of us watching every game. Um, because Especially the play by plays we... who were here literally every day. Yeah. 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 Especially Atlas, you know. Yeah. It no, was casting the majority one. of the games, yeah. But oh well, like yeah, I guess like, but you were still here every single day. Yeah, you, you just you saying because your votes were more base than mine. <laughs> <laughs> than mine's were. Yeah, I, I just, I actually like, I felt like now was a time where I could just let my fleet freak flag fly a little bit more. You know, mm. that was man, that was difficult <laughs> to say this time. Um, I, I just, I, I, I felt, I felt safer for some reason. This vote, I'm really, and this vote was the one that I was just, the most I just, hazardous. I just want to yeah. thank you as well because. Next time when I'm gonna vote for my third uh, third all protein, maybe I will feel a little bit more empowered to Dude, vote. Dude, just vote with your heart. Yeah, man. but you know what? I do want to vote with my heart. I get you <laughs> going, man, chronicler. I can't oh, just believe not you for did POG. that. <laughs> What's well, not just POG? It's all pro as well. The amount all pro of is fine. Yeah, you do what you want. Just for POG, don't deny barrel my vote. Like that's all I'm saying. Also, for the Korean no, viewers, I, I do want to say it is I nice. I lost my vote. It's now It is nice I'm to get the uh, the extra interaction because sometimes it feels like you know it's a little bit divided. No, I so lo- I'm, I was really happy to see well, like it's... all the passionate responses, good or bad. <laughs> so actually, talking I, about our votes because we I'm don't actually oftentimes get that. Quite that sad because nice. I love essaying. So there was a person that wrote like a, a six page essay, and I actually responded with More a two page essay, and it's a throwaway. They never responded yeah. i was like i put in a lot of effort i was like i'm gonna engage with they this don't person actually care what you think they just wanted you to feel upset and by the way yeah, I, I, they I just to, want their favorite player to be I, number I one to, I, it's I a permanent like, oh, thing cool, and they want i just i just responded accolade. with i'm happy for you or i'm sorry that happened and then just left it <laughs> oh, i just love it love an excuse to write a good old essay <laughs> I, I also want to make it very clear this is not a taunt um from us this is not a um you guys are wrong, you know, you guys no, are, no, are, are inferior to us or anything. But please, like, don't send... Don't, the, the sending threats is, like, never okay, but don't send angry messages telling people how to vote in a in a system where people can vote for whoever they want. Just don't do it. Just, hmm. just please, please don't do it. It's not acceptable. If, and you can also, like, just send a tweet asking, like, Oh, but why did you put this one here? Because we will give you a response. We yeah, will answer. We love yapping. State. Yeah, we will yap. It is our job. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're here doing. Yeah, Yeah, that's what we're doing. So, you know, there's a lot of transparency in our votes, by the way. Like, an extreme amount. Yeah. So, just saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's enough of that. (laughs) That's enough. Yeah, throw the paper (laughs) away. Throw the paper away. I I thought it was fun. I I, I like All Pro. I'm sad I like it. uh, I also do really like this discussion. Yeah. um, As you may have got by my yelling and stuff like that. Because I I, I do think that it's really fun to... To have disagreements and to have different ways of thinking about these sorts of things. That's why, like, and we will continue here. to vote however we want to. Yeah. If 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 anyone but Faker would have voted Lucid second and G Woo third, they would have gotten crucified. Did, did Faker actually do yep. that? Yeah. He is such a god, man. I know. I mean, I guess we all know that. Like, it's true, but like, I mean, we've, still, it's it's nice to have based. the confirmation. But that's what I'm that's what I'm saying is that 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 is actually one of the parts that annoys me the most because I would love it if we have more. Votes like that, but the only one that can Isn't get away it? with it. People is, are scared because I don't, they get threats. Well, I, this is I, I the thing. Like want to open Faker's DMs. <laughs> no, but the thing <laughs> is, like, I imagine that Faker is point, probably actually. the one person who is above it. Faker is probably the one person that the fans are just like, oh, I mean, if Faker said it, it must be correct. There's even no world that I, I love Lucid, okay, and I would never ever put him second. And Faker's like, ah, he's second. We played against him; he was really good. Yeah, I was gonna put <laughs> slam it down. <laughs> Jiwoo, who like forced him to play a game that we thought might end in a draw somehow. He was Third. Like, who was that dragon guy? He was annoying. <laughs> Throwback to when uh, Ruler called his uh, sub in during COVID. It was Alistair. Lostar, right? It yeah. was Lost Boss. Yeah. He yeah. just called hey, it. Alistair. <laughs> Good hey, job, Alistair. Alistair. Good job. <laughs> it's such an iconic moment. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, do we want to end with um, officially putting our predictions in for Jamshil? I mean, I, I'm ready. To We've already had the discussion, lower. but we can officially predict now. I'm I'm ready to officially predict Hanwha to win lower finals. No. I'm not ready for a grand finals pred. I'll say three two Hanwha Life Esports. What do you want? Uh, three one T one three one Genji. I'm a three one three one Hanwha uh, against T one. Like I didn't put the score, but mm-hmm. three one. 
And when when they're against uh, Gen G, how does it go? I I don't know. Like I, I, I guess I would get. I guess I would predict Jonas three strong. three one Gen G. Yeah. <laughs> I guess like if I had to right now. Yeah. This may be changed uh, before. Uh, oh yeah, probably probably will. Yeah yeah. But I, I think I probably would put Gen G three one over Hanwha at the moment. I'm gonna pred three zero T one three zero Gen G. I just want to be freed from our karmic prison of T1 Genji for the fifth final in a row. So I really hope that we go back in the next Pog State and you guys are like, you idiots, you thought T1 was good. I hope that happens. I can't wait to be an idiot. Well, as I didn't well. think Brendan. Didn't no, think no, no. Like, we're not. But yeah, I hope you guys look like idiots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to be a 3 0, isn't it, on Saturday because I'm casting? Doom. For Hanwa. Well, it has to be a 3 0 for someone. Um, we've already had the Hanwa 3 0 over and then T1, we have so it's T1's Doom. turn. Right? Wait, so I should predict a 3 2. Although I guess no, I Valdis... casted a 3 1. Oh, yeah, I casted no, a 3 1. So it's no a 3 1 or a 3 0. No Everything yet. I've predicted to be a 3 1 has also been a 3 0. So we're really. really <laughs> oh no, the up. Andy prophecy is coming <laughs> true. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of lines here, guys. <laughs> no, basically, if I'm casting, it's a 3 0. That's how it goes. I love that we have a 50 50 split, though. That's you know I love different. It's been a good playoffs. Different opinions. It actually has been really. My bolstered. prediction is purely based on vibes, though. It's exactly what Wolf was saying is not a way that you should predict a series. But, but I just right. I just think that they're going to yeah, win. It's fine. Yeah, like I don't know. They, but there is, but there is actually you know. proof that T1 has been able to quickly improve. Like that yeah. is actually there yeah. is proof with this very roster with mostly the same coaching staff that they have been able to massively improve over a short period of time. So. It's vibes, but there is actually evidence to support this as well. So I think it's a, a valid opinion. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's first and second in the LCK, right? That's <laughs> And they went to, I think it was the first series also a, a, a 2-1 for T1 in round one. I know the second two one. 2-0. Well, that was a 2-0. Yeah. And then the second was two a 2-1 for Humble Life. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. sorry. I'm, talk, I'm talking yes. about... Yeah, 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 it was 2-0, yeah, yeah. then 2-1, so then 3-0. And so theoretically, based three on one. how the matchup's going, it ain't looking great for T1. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just you know when it comes to the crunch, as it as it as it were, I think it's um I think it's probably T1 that will be able to get it together. I really hope Hanwha makes it, not because I have anything against T1, but I would just love a different, different teams, different yep. teams, different narrative, different representation at MSI. What about V11? How about that narrative, Chronicler? Well, if T1 make it to finals, I'm sure we what will cover it. What about four Gen G trophies versus V11? Like V12. That's V13. a good one. I just points well, to the match. I feel like the numbers just <laughs> keep going up. It's just, it's just <laughs> such a such a Sisyphean task of us just endlessly trying to. I I, I just. We just keep Something putting else. more re's in front of the rematch. It's the re, so re, you guys, re, 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 yeah, re. Yeah, yeah. It's the what? back to 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 back. When Valdez is casting, like, like ignore the dust that's coming off his like team sheets that <laughs> he script. picks up. That's literally just All coming right. out from like six months prior. And <laughs> some of us are like, oh, well, what does it say again? Oh, it's just the. The, the zero has been scribbled out and now it's a one. It's a like, tally uh, mark. This is the third time they face obviously the fourth time. Yeah, they face yeah each exactly. Other. And all <laughs> of the, the points in the match. Like after after Genji wins, Valdez just preemptively crosses it to a five <laughs> for next season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you put it back in the trunk and then it's brought out again. <laughs> it's like the fan signs where they like cross cross out the yeah, free zero, zero free, free one. one. Yeah, yeah. What about Viper getting an LCK title? Oh, How about that? Would love that, that would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I, I, like, I think that when it comes to actually winning, for all these teams, there's really cool narratives, right? There's T1, because T1 hasn't actually won a title in two years. That'd be cool, especially, it's also, I think, really hard for teams to win Worlds, then get it done. Home of Life would be the first org to win it since 20... Who won in 2019 summer? Was it in the uh, T1? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Summer, wait, summer. I know they won spring, but... I think it was, yeah. I think they also won we, summer. We had the yeah, stats yeah, today from yeah, 2 yeah. and DK, and they beat DK. So, because it's just, to, it's, so it's been, D, obvious, so it's DK for free, free, uh, free finals T1 in were row. really dominant in uh, 2019. That was the super yeah, 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 roster yeah, yeah. with yeah. Teddy yeah. and Mata and stuff, but then they collapsed at Worlds, and so we've forgotten that roster completely because yeah. we've just blew them so, out of our mind. Yeah, and we had Griffin and, and, and Dumb coming up at yep. the time, so they were all the rage. But it, it legitimately would be the first time in like five years that a different orc that isn't, Dom one when they were dominant slash T1 Gen G wins, which would be, I think, so cool. Especially coming in, because we were like home alive, they're very clearly third. So there's no bad outcomes except Gen G T1 and a free zero finals. I mean, Don't look, do that. <laughs> uh, technically, even no. Rock's Tiger uh, storylines to, to, to. Right? 
There it is. Technically speaking, like technically still, it's tigers to the versus org. tigers, guys. Because Genji the tiger tigers, and then there's rocks tigers, and it's peanuts still there. The last cool. rocks tiger. Yeah. I haven't said that narrative since 2021. It's been like a while. Uh, I that that one just off. makes me sad about Korean tigers and the fact that they're extinct. It's a sour note to yeah. end on. Yeah, anyway. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on um, that note. What can we? What can we end on that's exciting? Mm. Oh, that is the fact that the playoffs are coming up. In a few days' time, for you guys, this the playoffs. Gonna be, sorry, the 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 finals. Playoffs. The, the finals. The, the finals. It's been. It's a really long. Wake night. up, Alice. The playoffs are starting. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to put in perspective, we just uh, we we had some some delays. So we had the series, and and just as casters, you really, and as deskers, you like you have to be really on. So yeah, kind of an adrenaline I had to high. You carry it. Yeah, that, that would have been like, yeah. terrifying. Which, <gasps> that's the one time that I've seen okay. either of you like really <laughs> nervous. Is, yeah interviewing because it's atlas was like yeah i was like shaking Chovy. my microphone like yeah i actually I had a little god yeah, sitting next to me of course so and Chovy. but just so so what G-son happens there, like. is <laughs> off, after a series gen Gen-G-son. Gen-G-son. After, after a series uh, if you have any downtime you just go straight into the podcast you kind of go a little loopy and we had like an hour and a half so it was just us sitting there and <laughs> We were just yeah. and so now I can now now that that's happened I can do my my outro once yeah. again. I just mm. wanted to make sure that yeah, thank you. I see like everyone note. who's standing behind the cameras is like get out, get get out, get out, get out, All right, so finals are going to be coming up. It's going to be in Jamshill. It's going to be absolutely amazing. We've got the lower the bracket dome. final coming up first. That is obviously going to be T1 versus Hummel Life Esports. The winner of that facing off against Genji the day afterwards on exactly the same stage it's going to be absolutely dope and we're hoping that we see you there but that will do it for the pog state thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode bye 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 bye, bye. bye.